welcome to our video. So today we'll be discussing the alternate pathways of ATP production. Let's go! An oxidative phosphorylation system. My process relies on glucose to be traveled via the blood to the muscles to be stored as glucose chains called glycogen. So what we just did was in the glycolysis system. Um, because it's high intensity for a moderate duration of time. This process is mainly found in anaero anaerobic exercises such as doing curls. <laughs> I'm in the creatine phosphate system. Creatine phosphate and ADP are catalyzed by creatine kinase to make ATP and creatine. So now we're going to be discussing some comparisons between creatine phosphate, oxidative phosphorylation, and glycolysis. So for oxidative phosphorylation, it is much slower than creatine phosphate and glycolysis due to there being more enzymatic steps to the process. So one advantage of glycolysis is that it can occur without oxygen. So for creatine phosphate, it is considered to be the first energy source that's capped tapped into, compared to oxidative phosphorylation, which is second, and then glycolysis, which is third. So in conclusion, there are many benefits of each system and process of creatine phosphate, oxidative phosphorylation, and glycolysis. And which system you're using right now really depends on what you're doing at that moment. We're almost never solely on, in one system at a time either. Usually there's some overlap between the systems. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. And leave a comment down below. So what we just did there was in the glycolysis system. Um, I completely forgot what I was going to say. I'm the oxidative phosphorylation system. My sister was on. <laughs> My sister! One advantage of glycolysis is that it can perform, not perform, what? <laughs>